Okay, year 13. So um, once again, just going to do a very quick uh, screencast here, uh, revising what we went through today, looking at the three different types of muscle that you have in your body. So the first clip, here we are, um, smooth muscle. Okay, remember we spoke about smooth muscle. This is involuntary. That means that you have no control over it. Okay, remember we spoke about that, that you know your, your breakfast that you ate this morning is pretty much being massaged around in your stomach, which is smooth muscle. And you're not telling your muscles to kind of contract and relax at all in your stomach. It's just happening. The same with your colon at the moment and your digestive system. Things are moving through that system, whether you like it or not. Don't visualize it. Oh, too late. Um, but yeah, things are moving through that system, not because you're telling it to, but involuntarily, okay, your muscles are contracting and relaxing. All right. So it's pretty much controlled by the nervous system. All right. So that's your that's your brain. Okay, all those nerves that run through your body, down your spinal column, down your vertebral column, um, hormones in your body, and the chemicals that you know basically uh, make all these reactions happen. So it's going on without you consciously having to do it. All right, it's very very um, stretchy, and it, it has a very kind of slow speed of contraction. All right, so it goes very slowly. It literally just think about a nice kind of massaging type of. Uh, type of image and that's what you get with smooth um, muscle involuntary okay um, it's not striated that means it doesn't have that branching look about it that's why it's called smooth very very smooth if you could cut open your stomach and have a look at the walls of your stomach they would be very very smooth um, so there's no kind of branching going on at all that's that's what striated means um, some have these kind of rhythmic contractions You'll hear about peristalsis, okay, so when you swallow food, okay, it just gets squeezed nice and rhythmically, nice, you know, a nice pace, nice and slow, and that food gets squeezed all the way through the system of your body. So, you know, for example, your intestines, um, your blood vessels, you know, that's a great example, okay, they're nice and smooth if you cut those open. Obviously, don't do that at home. Um, but if you cut those open, um, you'll see that the walls of them, all your arteries and your veins, are all smooth on the inside. Okay, so that was smooth muscle. Should be nice and simple. Remember, you do not have control over it. It's always contracting and relaxing in the background. Moving on, we have cardiac muscle. Now, if you remember cardiac, the word cardiac or cardio um, just relates to the heart. Okay, so whenever we talk about cardiac muscle, it means the heart. So you do not have cardiac muscle anywhere else in your body apart from in your heart. Um, these are striated, which means it has that branching look about it. So those of you that have been lucky enough to do a heart dissection, um, you're, you know, when you cut that heart open and you had a look at the, you know, the valves and things, the walls of the heart inside are actually, you know, look kind of at that branch look about them. Okay, but you know, um, striated, they're not smooth. Once again, the contractions are involuntary. That means you're not in control of them. You don't sit here now going uh, beat, 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 okay? It, it's just happening. You do not have to control it. These are rhythmic, okay? That's why we get a nice kind of heart rate. Remember, 74 beats per minute. That's what the average, oh, sorry, 72 um, beats per minute is what the average heart um, for an adult. For you guys, it might be beating slightly faster. Um, we spoke about the fitter you are, the lower your heart rate will be. Um, so, yeah, babies have ridiculous heart rates, 120, 140 beats per minute. Okay, so they have these tiny little hearts. Obviously, your heart is the pump that sends the blood around the body. So the bigger the heart you have, the less times it has to pump to get the same volume around. So fitter people have bigger hearts. And your, your heart is a muscle, just like your bicep. If you train your heart, if you put stress on that heart, it reacts and gets bigger. So fitter people have bigger hearts, and that's why they have lower um, resting pulse rate. So I think um, your man, old uh, Armstrong, the uh, Lance Armstrong, the cyclist, his resting heart rate is something like 20. You know, it's like ridiculous. Um, and once again, only found in the heart. All right, so don't confuse cardiac muscle with anything else in your body. It is only found in your heart. It is involuntary. You don't control its contractions, but those contractions are rhythmical. 
okay nice rhythmic kind of beat obviously as we exercise that heart rate increases because we need more oxygen to the muscles you get oxygen from the blood remember we spoke about oxyhemoglobin a big word it just means you know the the red blood cells that are carrying oxygen around need to be pumped th via the blood to the muscles so that's cardiac muscle the next one and this is the one that we're most uh, kind of you know au fait with that, that we know the most about is our skeletal or skeletal muscle all right, so this is you know your classic muscle man here, like you can see in the picture. That's that skeletal muscle. So these are the classics that we've been learning: the, the biceps, triceps, deltoids, abdominals, quadriceps, hamstrings, gastrocnemius. You know, all of those muscles are skeletal muscles. Um, they're attached to our bones. And remember, not to get confused with the ligaments. Okay, it's tendons. So tendons attach muscle to bone. Okay, tendons attach muscle to bone. Ligaments attach bone to bone. So at the top end and bottom end of each of your muscles, so your bicep, there are tendons at the top and there are tendons at the bottom attaching it to your skeleton. And it's this attachment that enables you to bend your arm. So for, uh, for example, your bicep, when your bicep contracts, it pulls on the tendon and raises your lower arm up. That's how they work pretty pretty easy really they are striated so if you were to cut your muscles open once again don't do that at home um, but if you were to cut them open you would see you know these small branching kind of features that we call striations on there um, the contractions um, they, they can be slow or fast and they are voluntary i.e. you decide when you do the contractions you decide when you bend your arm you decide when you bend your body over at the hips you decide when you bend your knee okay so your brain you tell your brain and your brain tells your muscles it's a great little system remember we spoke about the different types of fibers you get fast twitch and s slow twitch um, fast twitch slow twitch and just like they sound fast twitch is really good for explosive um, thing so jumping so basketball if you're doing the old slam dunk you want to have those fast twitch muscles uh, muscle fibers that give you that explosion and um, sprinters long jumpers you know those types of activity you know they're your fast twitch people your slow twitch um, the opposite okay slow twitch are really good for endurance they will keep you going for a long period of time so you know the cyclists um, the marathon runners the rowers the swimmers you know that type of thing where you just need to keep your body going for you know a long period of time um, it's slow twitch muscle fibers that uh, that help you do that and we spoke about that being hereditary okay so you know that is hereditary you are handed down that however we can train it okay so you can train some of this even though you inherit it um, once again you know, just the examples here on the slide that we've already been through but that's skeletal muscle just very very quickly going through these muscular contractions okay so our, our muscles can either contract or relax when they contract we tend to flex the muscle okay or you know uh, flexion we breathe we kind of narrow down that joint movement or we can relax what we call extension which extends the uh, the arm or the leg okay but there are there are different types of contractions that we have um, so we have isometric isokinetic and isotonic and we'll just very quickly whiz through these so isometric contractions that's where the tension develops but there's no shortening or lengthening okay so the example that we did about pushing our palms together as hard as we can obviously you know there's tension in the muscle there you know but um, the muscle isn't lengthening or shortening at all okay same with um, you know if you stood in the doorway remember we spoke about that example where you push your arms against the doorway that is an isometric contraction okay so you're not lengthening or shortening you've just got that muscle at tension okay a bit like a sprinter in the blocks okay that is also an isometric contraction so they're ready to go so there's tension there but it's not lengthening or shortening isometric isokinetic 
okay isokinetic this is pretty much what we're doing um, on you know some fancy little beds you can get in in gyms you kind of get these isokinetic machines okay very very expensive machines um, where you push against them and the machines actually push back against you okay so um, you work at your maximum uh, tension so you don't actually put a weight stack on you know you, you if you're on the pec deck you would you would pull the pecs together and the harder you pull the harder the machine would push back same with the leg press or the chest press you push against the tension so your muscle is constantly working at the highest maximum tension possible okay very very cool and oh, the last one, this isotonic, this is the one that we do every day. We spoke about this. Isotonic um, is what we work out in a weights room. Okay, so that's with our strengthening and lengthening of our muscles. You know, that bicep um, curl that we spoke about, that's your classic isotonic contraction. So really, out of all of those, isotonic is the one that you need to remember. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. And um, yeah, listen to it. Rewind, listen, rewind, listen, and all that jazz. Love you loads, guys, and hope this has been useful. Take care. Bye.